So in this video, I'm going over this big beast right here. Sexy. <laughs> It's an all electric streamliner motorcycle built to beat the land speed record. Give you guys a little insight into my background. I used to, I did all sorts of weird stuff. Used to be an artist, used to be a photographer, used to ride BMX bikes. Um, after all that, I realized there wasn't much in it. So I went to school for aerospace engineering, started an electric bike company, used to build a bunch of weird custom motorcycles. And this little project just kind of came out of, out of nowhere for me. I, a company called me to recycle some batteries. I was working for a battery company at that time and they had a big old battery, like 30 kilowatts. It was a lithium iron phosphate, 36, 650 cells. And they said, oh, this thing's roached and it's done. Basically I said, well, I don't know if I can do anything with it. You know, maybe I'll charge you guys some money. And they said, well, how about we throw in a free motor? We got this drivetrain sitting around. You can have it. We're not using it. I said, deal. So I took the battery part and I was like, all right, well, there's only a couple bad cells in here. And I was going to sell it. I sold a couple. And then my wife and I we went to Bonneville and we, I just caught the bug out there. I saw these crazy homemade bikes that were just going like 200 plus miles per hour. And I was like, oh, I gotta freaking build one of these. So I went back home and I started thinking about what I could use and I had this drivetrain right there. I go online, look at the record. You know, there's no real motorcycle records for electric aside from a couple. I was like, I think I'm gonna do this. So I reconfigured the battery. Actually, let's start off, the battery. a lithium iron phosphate it's 114 in series 15 in parallel 22 kilowatt hour battery can put out over 200 kilowatts continuous it uses a 36 650 cell connected with aluminum custom collector plates total pack voltage is around 420 volts and that's so we can get the most out of that motor and controller in the back now all that battery runs back to that controller but in between the two there's a thing called a bdu Ooh, that shit rhymed wow battery disconnect unit that's a battery disconnect unit. It runs two contactors, one on the high, one on the low, and a pre-charge unit with a fuse. Now that fuse is there for short circuit protection, and that's it. The two contactors allow you to turn the bike on and off, and the pre-charge allows you to, to basically give it a little juice before you give it all the juice. After the BDU, you go straight to the controller. Now the controller is a combo unit that goes with the motor. Um, the controller runs on an IGBT system, and it's dual cooled. It's actually got a forced air system and a liquid cooled plate. Now you can use the force air system to keep the IGBT temperatures low, allowing you to do higher discharge rates for longer. All that pumps into an AC induction motor, which is also a liquid cooled stator. And that goes into an outboard bearing support sprocket, which runs to a 530 chain out to the back tire. That's all been custom built for this application and it runs back to an aluminum wheel off of a 1990s Mustang. It's like a spare wheel out of the back. And we wrapped some Goodyear Eagle land speed tires on there. These are the only tires that are rated at 300 miles per hour or so. They won't really tell you, but they, they kind of wink when they say it. Since this is a motorcycle, I only have two contact patches, so I'm running a pretty high PSI in the back. The point of that is we don't want too much tire deflection at higher speeds, so we can try and save the tires but we don't want so much PSI that it actually blows the tire up. So we're running about 90 in the back and 70 in the front. Front tires are Mickey Thompson drag radials and they're basically rated up to about 250, question mark, wink, wink. Now when you're going fast, you can keep it up, but when you're going slow, it's pretty hard. And even when you're stopped. So this thing needed a kickstand. So what I did is I actually made a pair of landing gear that can come out and they're retractable. It actually runs a Harbor Freight Jack powered by a Makita drill, which has been kind of disassembled and put into the cab. That jack will actually pull up, pulling two push rods, allowing the two pieces to come up. And right now it's in its naked state, but once the body gets on it, those two landing gears, they'll pull up and tuck into the body nice, making it all streamlined and sexy. While this thing is all about speed, you also need to stop. So I got two parachutes in the back, a regen system on the motors, and a four piston Brembo with a 300 millimeter rotor in the back. That's all controlled with my foot in the cockpit. I have a secondary thumb throttle that kind of controls the regen and then I have a foot brake that controls the actual brake and then I got two parachute controls on the tillers. That's right, it's got tillers, not handlebars. It's a motorcycle, but it doesn't have any handlebars. I, that definitely threw a couple people off. But you control it like a forklift, basically. You, you sit on each side and you got two little rods here that you control back. Those are connected via linkage to the front end. You can't lean, you can't do anything. You're just kind of stuck in there. So you can check out one of my videos about learning to drive this thing. It's like a carnival ride almost. It's, it's a, it'll blow your mind when you're trying to figure out how to work it. It took a while.
Those tailors go out to a custom made front end. It's a trailing link front end, kind of like a Vespa, but on steroids. Olin's was nice enough to send me a pair of shocks to put on there, so it's nice and smooth. The front end was built with all DOM tubing, and it's actually the third version we were trying to do. We built the first two, we installed them, sat in the cockpit, and then all of a sudden there was a big old block of triple trees in front of my face. So we redesigned it into this so we could lower the footprint so I could get more visibility across it. In the back suspension, we're running two R6 to an R6 modified swing arm. That allows us to get extra spring weight because this bad boy weighs almost a ton. 1800 pounds with wider weight and everything in it. I didn't realize it, but in order to get certified, you have to have SFI 20 almost everything. Suit, helmet, head and neck, gloves, arm restraints, shoes, everything. SFI 20 is actually a rating uh, for how many seconds you can be on fire before you like really start to burn. So SFI 20 means I'll have 20 seconds of good old hot fun until stuff gets serious. Well, hopefully stuff never does it serious. And I know what you're saying batteries on, it's like a big old bomb it's just gonna catch on fire. <laughs> right? No, it's lithium iron phosphate. So that's a, a safer chemistry than your normal Tesla or any other car that has out there. Now, if there is a problem, there's also a fire suppression system that I can jam on that little button. It's basically a cold air system by DJ Safety that sprays a bunch of foamy liquid all over you to put you out. As for the vehicle control unit, the VCU, ECU, whatever you want to call it, I kind of went the dumb way with this. Um, everything on the bike is pretty dumb. Um, the BDU is controlled by 12 volt switches and relays, you know, so I turned them all myself to turn the bike on. The only thing that really needed to be controlled was the controller and the motor, right? So those all work on CAN bus, so I actually went with an Arduino, an Arduino with a CAN bus shield. And my buddy Andrew came over and he wrote me a really short code that actually controls the entire throttle input and the control of the motor. As for aerodynamics, you can see right now it's in its naked state. I've done all the math, I've done all the design. I'm just waiting to, to make the final decision if I can do aluminum or fiberglass. And my last couple videos, which you may have seen, I did a fiberglass project and I think I might do it on this. And if you look on that back wing, there's a bunch of names on there. Those guys are my heroes. Those are people that have given their time or money to the project to help pursue the goal of breaking the land speed record. So if you wanna be one of the people with your name on this bike, you can go to my website, larkmachinko.com and contribute via PayPal, or you can go to my GoFundMe and give to that. Anything over 50 bucks, get your name on the bike. Get your name on there. I'll send a photo to you. <clears throat> I just wanna say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'd like to say hi to all the new subscribers out there. It's gonna be a lot more videos coming up on this guy, so make sure you stay tuned. And if you haven't, go back and check some of the build videos because they're pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, with the crisis in the world, I don't know what's gonna be happening in the future for events, but we will be taking this thing out. I'm gonna take it out on the road. I'm gonna take it out to El Mirage and hopefully do a practice run on it. And hopefully Bonneville will still happen and we can take this thing out and break a record. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, I need you guys. I need one more thing from you guys. I need a name. I need a name for this bike. Right now I just call it Lark Streamliner, but that's not very cool. It's not very original. So I need, I need a name. Make sure it's good. Write it down in the comments below. I want it real punny. Real punny. All the electricity jokes you can think of. Give it to me. I want a name. I want a name for this thing across the side. If I pick your name, you don't even have to contribute anything. I'm gonna put your name below the one you chose as that's you. You're the one that did it. So make sure you leave that down below. I wanna see them all. Thanks guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. Hope you have a great day.